garden is starting to produce and is full of life right now. We picked this whole bowl of green beans just last night. That also means that it's time to get busy in the kitchen. We're going to be freezing these green beans today. Before I get these prepped, I want to go ahead and free up some freezer space to make room for them because we're going to be putting them on baking sheets to freeze before putting them into bags. I made a batch of chicken stock the other day. I like to freeze my chicken stock because then I can just grab a cube or two when I'm ready to cook with it. It makes it easy when you're ready to use some just to pop some out of the freezer. And by freezing it in individual cubes, you can easily just add a little bit of extra flavoring to soups or stocks or things. So I'm just gonna pop these out of the ice cube trays and put them in my bag. Before I do that, let me label it here. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this back into the freezer and then we'll get started on our green beans. We have two different varieties of green beans here. These are Seichel's pole beans that we have growing on the arch trellises out in the garden. And these other ones are Blue Lake bush beans that are growing in the in-ground space in the big field. first batch washed. I'm not sure if they're going to stick to these stainless steel trays or not, so I'm just putting down a silicone liner, just on the safe side. I'm just going to do these in batches in case the kids wake up before I have a chance to finish. I'm just going to chop off the little ends here and put them on the sheet to freeze. And the ends I'm going to put in this bowl so we'll add it to our compost. You work so hard to grow all the food that you can, and then sometimes you forget that it takes a lot of work to put it up. <laughs> and make sure you actually utilize everything that you're growing. Last year was our first year gardening at this new property, and we ended up just freezing most of our stuff because it goes a lot faster than trying to can everything. We also dehydrated some stuff as well. I actually prefer the taste of green beans when they're frozen. I think they ret retain a lot more of their crunch, which I like the natural snack of a green bean. Sometimes when you can them, they get a little soggy and that's just not to my preference when we're eating them as a main side dish. I'll probably still can some later on in the summer for use in soups and casseroles and different things like that. This first tray is ready to go in the freezer. Try to freeze one tray without the silicone nonstick just to see how it does in comparison to the other. I just put the last of the green beans into the freezer. Now, while those are freezing, I have a few other things I need to get done here. So the other night, Ryan and I harvested all of our onions. And there are some onions that I wanna go ahead and use up quickly. Let me grab one to show you. So this onion, for example, it kind of split here in the middle and I'm just not so sure how this will cure. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop this up
made quite a mess on my cutting board. So I'm gonna wash this before I cut the rest of the onion up. I'm gonna go ahead and give this onion a wash too. So the onion kind of split here. Oh, actually just came right apart. So I'm just gonna cut this up and then that way it'll be ready to go when I need to use it later, since I already have the cutting board out. Well, that's ready to go. The kids are up from their naps now and they're having a snack of oranges here at the counter next to me while I get a few other things done. I figured I would work on preserving some of this garlic. Some of the garlic that I harvested a few weeks ago doesn't look the prettiest and these ones won't store as well long term. So I am going to be peeling these, putting them in some olive oil with some herbs to store for later on. This will probably make quite a bit of a mess here because there is still a lot of dirt. So I'm just sorting through because some of these cloves, like this one's perfectly fine, but this one has some insect damage. So the ones that are a little bit too rough, I'm gonna put in a compost bowl. On the garlic, there's like a paper uh, husk. I'm just peeling all that off before we put them into the oil. We grew a lot of garlic this year so this will be a fun way to preserve it. <laughs> you look at what I'm doing, honey. <laughs> My kids think I'm kind of crazy. They're staring at me with some crazy eyes here. Oh, that's a pretty good size garlic clove there. And this one, for instance, has a little bit on the outside. So I'm just cutting off the bad part. On this other half, there's no damage. So I'm just gonna use half this clove. We spent a lot of time and energy growing this garlic and harvesting it. I want to make sure we utilize as much of it as we possibly can. I hate seeing things go to waste. <laughs> this one has a little bit of a hole, so we're going to try to chop around that one too. Some garlic cloves you can peel really well if you put them in like a Tupperware and shake them pretty hard. However, this one, I don't think we'd have luck with that. The paper husks are sticking pretty tightly. And since it's kind of irregular and <laughs> I really need to sort through them, I'm just gonna do it by hand. See your bowl. The kids want some strawberries, so I'm gonna cut them up some real quick before I continue. Strawberries and oranges for a snack today. Sounds pretty good to me. The kids now have some strawberries, and now we're gonna finish up with this garlic oil. Let me go outside real quick and I'll grab some rosemary and we'll add some rosemary to the oil as well. So we have a nice sprig of rosemary here. I'm going to be putting the rosemary in the jar with the oil just to give it some nice infusion. I'm just using an old jam jar and I'm going to fill it up with the garlic and then we'll top it off with the oil. I wasn't sure if all those were going to fit in here, but it just did. 
just barely and you can see our rosemary in there as well so let me go grab the oil i want to experiment and do several different oil infusions this summer so i just went ahead and grabbed the really big thing of oil from costco the other day so this is a brand new one get this open here and i'm just going to pour it so that it's filled all the way to the top covering all the cloves my own personal preference for safety reasons i'm going to be keeping it in the fridge and making sure that oil is covering the garlic cloves at all times so if it ever gets low on oil i'll top it up because this oil will also infuse with the garlic flavor and the rosemary and i'll be using this in cooking as well so let's just pour the oil in until it comes all the way to the top and one thing you should know i did leave a little bit of room at the top hopefully that's enough it won't stay this pretty uh, because once you do put it in the fridge it will solidify i'd rather it look slightly less beautiful and be guaranteed safe for me and my family So there's our garlic with rosemary and oil. This will be really handy. That way I can just pull individual cloves out and I'll be ready to use them uh, for my cooking. I don't have to worry about peeling and sorting through garlic. Plus, it was a good thing I did that because some of the cloves on those heads, as you saw, were kind of rotten and I wanted to make sure I sorted through those heads. I'll be watching my other garlic in the basement as uh, time goes on over the next couple months. And if anything starts to get soft, or it looked like it's starting to go bad, I'll be sure to go ahead and sort through them as well and maybe do some more of this. I'm also gonna make some zucchini bread and I wanna get some dinner going as well. So let's do that. All right, so let's make some zucchini bread. My helper just off camera is gonna do the mixing for us. There's your bowl, sweetie. Before we get started, we're gonna preheat the oven to 350. So we have several zucchini in the garden that were quite large. We could eat these, but we prefer to cook up the smaller ones about like this for our side dishes and cooking. So we're gonna use this for some zucchini bread. So I had the food processor out and we're gonna grate it up. The food processor is a really quick way to grate zucchini. I just stick it in the top and it goes through it in a couple seconds. So we have our zucchini all nice and shredded now. One qualm I have with this, food processor is it's hard to get it off the box. I just realized that. I've had this thing for years. My mom had one my entire childhood growing up that I always use. Guys, oh, I can't believe I've never realized that before. I always sit here and try to carefully get my fingers. Let me show you. I always try to carefully get my fingers in the edge and try to get a good grip to pull this up and it's very difficult for me because my hand's not quite wide enough. I was just about to sit here and complain to you guys about my one qualm with the food processor is I can't get it up. <laughs> I can't believe I never noticed that guys. Just push up on it with your finger. I don't know how many times I almost cut my finger trying to get this out. Always did it wrong. Okay, you ready to help me? Yep. So we're making zucchini bread muffins. To do this recipe, we need one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You ready? I'm gonna pass it to you, you ready? Yep. Then we need one cup of sugar. Get your spatula. All right, are you gonna stir? Yeah. Very very carefully, okay? Yeah? You think you can do it? Yeah. All right, stir very slowly so it doesn't go everywhere. Half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, yeah. and then one teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay, you pour this in too? And we need half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. Then the recipe calls for two eggs. However, I am going to be using a banana because we have an egg allergy in the family. So I want everyone to be able to enjoy this. In case you didn't know, 
one banana replaces one egg in most recipes and it's a quick and easy substitute. You can also use applesauce as a substitute as well. The recipe calls for two eggs, so we're gonna do two bananas instead. And these are nice and ripe. When they have the brown spots on them, that's when I like to use them in baking because they are the sweetest. The bruised, the better. Next, we need half a cup of oil. I'm gonna be using coconut oil um, today instead of canola oil. And as long as your coconut oil is fairly soft, I've found that you don't need to melt it, personally. We also need one teaspoon of vanilla. I've been making vanilla myself for probably about three years now. Vanilla prices went crazy a while back and this uh, definitely saves a little bit of money and it also tastes better in my opinion. For the homemade vanilla, I just buy vanilla beans off Amazon and cover them up with vodka and let them sit for about six months. Okay, so we had our one teaspoon of vanilla added and now we need two cups of the zucchini. And for the zucchini, but I left the skin on. This zucchini is from our garden and we have an abundance of it right now. So zucchini bread is definitely one of those recipes where it's an easy way to use up some of that extra zucchini you have grown. So you wanna make sure you pack in your cup pretty tightly. So we need two of these. I have maybe a couple tablespoons left in addition to this nice little rounded cup here. I'm just gonna go ahead and add all of it into the bowl. Might as well. I don't like to waste anything, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use it all up. Okay, you can keep stirring for me, thank you. My stirrer is doing a great job over there. Okay, so that is all of our ingredients. We're gonna bake these at 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes. We are actually gonna be making these in zucchini muffins instead of a loaf pan because that is what my kids suggested. So we're gonna go with that today. Let me clean up here and we'll get those into the muffin trays and into the oven. Let's get started on dinner. Tonight for dinner, we're doing something quick and easy. We're making a BLT with our first big tomato that we've got from the garden. I have to show you guys this. Here is our first big tomato from the garden this year. Up until this point, we've only been harvesting cherry tomatoes. So I'm excited to have this and we're gonna have nice BLTs for dinner. I'm gonna get some bacon cooking and that'll go on our BLT sandwiches. have been in the freezer for about an hour, hour and a half, and they're nice and frozen now. You can hear they're very hard when you whack them together. So we are just gonna take these and put them into the Ziploc bag for long-term storage in the deep freezer. It works really well having it on the stainless steel tray. None of them are sticking together and none of them have stuck to the tray. So I don't think the silicone liner was necessary for the green beans. We have one gallon bag of green beans. I'll go put these in the freezer. I forgot about a tray, so make that one and a half gallons. I typically make homemade sourdough bread every week. However, I'm all out at the moment, so I had Ryan pick up some of this Dave's Killer Bread, and that's what we're gonna be using for our sandwiches today. So I'm gonna pop some of these in the toaster and get our tomatoes sliced up for our sandwich. This one is most likely a fused blossom, which is where two flowers, each trying to create their own tomato, come together.
Now that's beautiful. <laughs> this is exactly how I prefer my tomatoes too. More of the meaty flesh versus a lot of the gelatinous area where the seeds are. So this is a good looking tomato in my books. I'm pretty sure this one is the Abe Lincoln tomato variety. So I'm gonna show you how I put together my BLT tomato sandwich. If I had thought ahead more, I would have made homemade bread and homemade mayonnaise. However, I was gonna make do with what we have and enjoy this tomato regardless. So I just put the mayonnaise on first. Then we need a piece of romaine lettuce. Our tomato slice. But I like to do a little bit of fresh cracked pepper and salt on the tomato. And then of course we need the bacon. So we have our tomato sandwich here. I'm gonna squish it <laughs> down a little bit and then we'll slice it. The first tomato BLT uh, from the garden this year. I'm so excited. <laughs> That's so good. I'm gonna make up some for the rest of the family and we're gonna enjoy that for dinner. So. Thanks for hanging out with me today in the kitchen. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, y'all.